So I'm an activist. I live in Africa, but I want to take a vacation in Africa. What I wanted to do is go down the Omo River in, in Ethiopia, where there are isolated areas full of nature and, and habitated by the tribes. And, um, and I wanted to live with the tribes, have a nice adventure, short adventure, and go back to my, uh, to my fights in Africa, in other African countries. Um, I carried an inflatable canoe boat and um, went to the river, started paddling down the river, and it was, it was great, it was just fantastic. Uh, this place is, is, is full of crocodiles, big crocodiles, known to be aggressive. Um, in these areas of Ethiopia, there are about 50 uh, people killed by crocodiles a year. But I figured, okay, so I wouldn't swim in the river, I would just be inside the canoe. What kind of crocodile would try to attack a, a, an entire canoe? It's like a two meter and a half wide, it's, it's huge. And, uh, and I was wrong. Very big and very hungry crocodile did try. And he actually attacked my boat, trying to eat it. It was figuring that would be a big animal. Um, and that's what happens. All of a sudden, my boat jumps from down to up, and um, and two jaws are closed closed on the middle of the canoe. Luckily, on this canoe, I'm supposed to be in the rear, and my uh, and my gear is supposed to be in the front. So basically, the it's empty in the middle, and um, I found myself in shallow water all of a sudden, um, one foot in the crocodile's mouth, um, two uh, hands touching the sand through the water. And, uh, and one leg free. So I knew that next step, the crocodile was just taking me down the water and that's where it ends. So I, I just used all my force to, uh, to resist and try to fight and uh, push through the water and push and kick the, 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 the canoe and kick through the water and use all my power, all my strength in those seconds to try to get myself released and not, not get dragged into the deep water. Why? Because I knew that's where it ends. That's how the crocodile does. It gives you one bite. If he didn't kill you on the first bite, he takes you down the river and rolls you down. That's where it ends. I was lucky that I found myself in shallow water. If there was not no shallow water, I, I would have been. I wouldn't have any kind of uh, way to resist inside the water. I'm completely powerless. Um, and somehow I got released from the jaws of the crocodile. I, I think what happened is that he didn't catch me very well. So. The only thing that a crocodile can do is open its mouth to cut you again. And that's where I think in that split of a second is where I think I managed to get out, jumped out of the river. And that's where the story started because now I have um, 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 blood flowing, sprinkling out of my, uh, out of my foot, out of my calf. And um, I had to jump in the river to take my backpack because inside my backpack I had all my emergency and medical equipment uh, that I get for this kind of this kind of events so I um, I put pressure on the wound itself with a bandage and it didn't stop the bleeding so I tried a tourniquet and a tourniquet did stop some of the, uh, some of the bleeding um, and then I was finding myself in a place that was not populated so other places, other days, I've seen a family every maybe two, three hours, a family of tribes just living in, in, uh, in straw huts. But this part of the river was apparently completely abandoned. No one was on the banks of the river. So I started moving along the river because nobody can rescue me from that river. No one moves on the river. So I moved down the river, try to walk, but it was jungle. It was, it was forest, forest full of thorns. I tried to move um, through baboon trails, which are very narrow and, and low, uh, until I got stuck in the bush. And then I tried to walk on the steep banks of the river, which are muddy. So I kept on falling into the water where the crocodiles are now with blood. And at one point, I decided I, I just can't advance in this way. Uh, so what I've done is I took, um, I started gathering branches and, and, and put a lot of branches together, tie them together to, to prepare my first ra raft. And I moved on that raft uh, and continued on that raft. 
up to the night until it got very cold. Um, still no one. And afterwards, what was happening is that I was, um, uh, I had to sleep on the bank of the river. Um, crocodiles below, above, lions, hyenas, baboons, there's many dangers. So I, I, I put fire and, uh, and kept that fire going throughout the night to make sure that it deters the animals. So I couldn't sleep the whole night. You know, I couldn't feel my foot anymore, so I decided to remove the tourniquet until the blood started flowing again. So I gave it some kind of relief. Um, the following day, I continued to try. There were no people. Um, the river is, is, is crooked, so every time you think that, whoa, in 700 meters, next 700 meters, just around the bank, just around the corner, there's going to be people. So you have that kind of endless hope. And um, my next draft was a, a big uh, um, uh, dry tree that was already falling, but was tied by, uh, by the roots of other trees. I sat for an hour and I cut all the roots and released it and started flowing down the river with it. Only in the afternoon of, of, of that next day, late afternoon, I shouted and somebody answered. And those were tribesmen that actually saved me. Um, and I had to, uh, to um, swim the full wide width of the river, which is about 50 meters to 100 meters. I was, you had to cross the river? I had the to, side. Yes, because I had to cross the river because um, there were people on the other side. And, uh, and I was stuck in one side. Um, and after an eight kilometers walk on a stick, I did manage to find um, um, a place with a phone and communication that could call for help. And, uh, and that's basically how I got out of the river. Still, I had many days of, um, of different levels of medical care, starting from a nurse to uh, small clinics. Uh, and then ending up, ending up in, in, uh, in the capital, Addis Ababa, in, in a better hospital. Okay. At one point, even in the best hospital in the country, I didn't feel I'm getting uh, good treatment. And, and indeed, I mean, coming here to Rambam, you could see that the gap is huge. I mean, here I'm being taken care of so um, uh, wonderfully by the nurses and also by the doctors. It's a completely different, different story. I really feel that I'm being taken care of and Every time there is something, a specific doctor, specialized doctor comes, looks at it, gives me exactly the opinion, explains everything. So I'm, I'm more than happy for my decision. Let's say it was overdue <laughs> to come here and get, uh, and get real, real medical treatment. Okay. Uh, I'm really grateful for the team of nurses and, ho and doctors. And definitely I got all the attention <laughs> for this specific case. It is unusual. But I got so much attention by everybody that asked me how I'm doing and what they can do for me. And, and I'm totally pleased and very grateful for all the team. Thank you.